I hope you have Anaconda Navigator installed in your computer. So as a first step, let's go ahead and start our Anaconda Navigator. So I'm going to go into my launch pad and I'm going to launch my Anaconda Navigator from here. Sometimes it takes more than two tries for me to do it. But as soon as you're going to launch it, you will see an interface that's going to expose all sorts of programming environments that Anaconda Navigator comes with. As I've mentioned, that we will be using Jupyter Notebook, which is right around here, to learn to code in Python. Let's go ahead and launch Jupyter Notebook. Now, while it's launching, let me tell you why I have selected Python for you. Now, Python is a very powerful programming language. It supports procedural as well as object-oriented programming. And it's a simple language, easy to learn, and it's very versatile. When I say versatile, it means you can develop applications using this programming language, as well as a lot of server-side scripting is done in Python, and database management is done in Python. Our Jupyter Notebook is open now. As you must have noticed, as, as it launched, it opened two windows. Now, this window right here in the command prompt, this is the server side. This is where all the processing is done and you don't want to close this window while Jupyter Notebook is running. So make sure your command prompt stays open while you are programming and running your programs in Jupyter Notebook. Another thing you might notice is Jupyter Notebook will open in a web browser, your default web browser. For me it's Safari, so it has opened it in Safari if your default browser is Explorer, I hope it's not, or it's Chrome, uh, you're going to see a similar interface. On the URL bar or address bar, you will see localhost. Now localhost means that whatever you're doing, you're not you're not running your program some somewhere on the internet, you are running it on this computer. Right around here, we're going to create our program files and we are going to access them from here. Among all the folder options that I have, I'm going to click desktop. I'm going to keep my work on desktop so it's visible and I don't lose it. I'm going to click desktop. I'm going to click on new because I want to create a new file where I'm going to start working. And the notebook type, I'm going to click Python 3. So let's click on that. As soon as you're going to click on that, you will see something very similar to what I have. First and the foremost thing we're going to do is we are going to name our file. So click on Untitled, and I'm going to call it Python Lesson 1. And click Rename, and it's going to save a Python file on my desktop. Now in this interface, as you can see, it's it's very user friendly and it look there are very few buttons and it's clean. The thing that you're seeing in front of you, it's called a cell, and we are going to be putting our code in these cells. It just makes it a whole lot easy if you want to run one line of code at a time or multiple lines of code at a time, and you can manage them very. So let's start with our first piece of code, and let's see if we can tell computer to print hello world. So the syntax for hello world is, you click on the cell, you're going to type print and you'll see it turn green that means it has accepted the syntax parentheses open and we're going to start double code and we're going to say hello world now there are a few things to notice before i execute this the syntax for printing something or telling the computer to print something for us in Python is print and parentheses. If you want computer to print words which have a data type of string, you have to put them in double quotes like this. To execute it, we are going to press this button uh, that say run cell and you will see output immediately that say hello world instantly. And that's the beauty of Jupyter Notebook. It just quickly runs it and tells you the output. Now let's try printing a number. We're going to say print, parentheses. As soon as I'm, you're going to open parentheses, it's going to put the uh, closing parentheses for your convenience. And let me print number three. As you can see, I didn't put double quotes around it because the data type is not string, it's numeric. And for that, you don't need uh, double quotes or single quotes for that matter. And here we have our of number. In this section, we have learned about how to open Jupyter Notebook, the concept of cell where we type in our syntax, and how to actually use a print command in Python. Let's move on to the concept of variable. 
So let's assume we want to print, uh, we don't want to print hello world, or we, would, we don't want to print number three, but we want to print uh, something that a user is going to give us. Let's say we're going to ask a user, what's your name? And we want to print that. Now this has two steps to it. The first step or the first concept that you need to understand is the concept of variable. Now, a variable is that you are telling the computer that reserve this space and then whatever data is going to come, put that in that space and display it. We call it declaring a variable. Let's declare a variable. I'm going to do by asking the user to give their name and print their name. So I'm going to call my variable name and I'm going to set it equal to and let me just put my name Sarah and I'm going to click enter and I'm going to say print parentheses and instead of typing in Sarah I'm just going to type in the variable name so let's see what it's going to do as you can see instead of just writing print Sarah I just say I said I told computer that set Sarah equal to a variable name called name and then print the variable name this is a very important concept because right now I haven't asked the user to give an input but I have told the computer that this is a variable the value might change but whatever value is in that variable which is titled as name print that now let's notch it up a little bit and let's move on to asking the user for their name and then printing their name for that I'm going to execute step one, declaring the variable, and step two, printing the output. So I'm going to call it name equal to, uh, I'm going to ask the user for an input. In order to, the syntax for an input value in Python is input, which is really easy to remember. And then we're going to open parentheses, and we're going to ask the user about their name. So it's good to have some visual to it. So let's ask, what is your name? And then we are going to print name. So as you can see, what is your name? And there is an input box. I'm going to say Sarah. Click enter. And it's say Sarah right here. Print it 